marching thunderstorms overhead. Thunderstorms by Alternative Girl. Um, this is Soundcheck with Connie Dunn. Why don't we go around and do introductions? Hi, I'm Paul. I, uh, I play the bass. Uh, I'm Greg. I sing and play guitar. Hi, I'm Eric. I play keyboard and occasionally suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask, how did you guys get together as a band? Um... I I kind of started using Alternative Girl uh, like two years ago as just like a solo moniker because I started kind of making electronic music just after high school and I don't like using like my own name as like a stage name uh, and then back in like uh, January I kind of wanted to make it a, like a full band because I was recording an EP and Paul joined on to play drums and then Eric a couple months thereafter. I, I listened to the EP and really liked it. And then Greg was like, I guess you're in the band now. When I last saw you guys, it was at the Halloween performance. Uh -huh. And you guys were dressed up as, what was it, um, Michael Sarah? Yeah. We tried to be. Um, I'm broke, um, and I didn't have the money to buy the materials to look like Michael Sarah. Um, Eric was already kind of not going as Michael Sarah. Uh, I'm always dressed as Michael Sarah is the problem. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I decided to be a hungover soccer coach instead. It Why was Michael just a mess. Sarah? I honestly I don't know. I mean, he, he put out time. an album, so we could do a Michael Sarah cover show if we wanted to. <laughs> That's not what we're doing now. Back on track. <laughs> What's the name Alternative Girl? Like, where does that came? And it, it's kind of just like a reference to Tumblr girls, really. <laughs> um, but I kind of like the fact that like when I would play small shows, uh, people would come up to me after and be like, I didn't know what to expect when I saw Alternative Girl on the billing, but I didn't expect you. Um, and so I feel like it kind of just plays with like gender conventions and naming. What about like your band's tagline? Um, if you hate your ex, you'll probably love our music. <laughs> so I think we, uh, Greg mostly, because we signed on after, but Greg succeeded in making the saddest debut album of all time. It was remarkable. <laughs> like last December, I like walked away from just uh, a really, really abusive relationship, and then one night just started randomly recording music, and I was like, oh, I like this thing that I made, I think I'm just gonna make an album and like have that be my venting process for everything, uh, and so I did that. So would you say that like the meanings behind your lyrics and the music has changed since the release of your EP? Um, I mean, I kind of just wanted to like leave that, like. Uh, Poltergeist was the album for that, and so I kind of wanted to just like not keep writing songs about like an awful person. So I kind of decided to like have it all there. Um, but I'd say that like over the course of writing, I think it kind of changed some of like some of the meanings even kind of changed. So did you have any influences from other musicians? I don't know. Did I? Did I? <laughs> I'm a huge Antlers fanboy. <laughs> So, Overlook the Water is your newest track. Um, how did, tell me about the process of making it. Uh, I bought a Casio SK-1 before accidentally breaking it three, four days later trying to fix it. Um, it's this old, it's this like sampling toy keyboard from the 80s. Um, and you can just like record like one second of like vocal or just sound loop and play that back. And I was just messing around with that. I made a patch that I really liked and I was holding down chords and I found that it like repeated in a really interesting rhythm. And so I just kind of recorded that with the computer um, in Ableton and then just kind of took these lyrics that I'd been collectively writing uh -huh. um, and put them to it because it's, uh, you know, it was toying with an idea and then it kind of just came out as that. But, and it worked out, I liked it. So I decided to keep it. Um, do all of you guys work together when you're making like the melody? So far it's been a lot of, um, Greg is just prolific in his experimentation. He, 
I mean, every time I see him, it's always like, hey, I have something new to show you. I got and this it's, new loop. Yeah, it's like, I have this new loop, or I have this new idea, and it's like, Paul, I got a great, you know, he'll call me, it'll be 12 12.05, you know, in the morning, I'll be winding down, or I'll be in the shower, and I'll be like, Paul, can you, can you talk for a second? I'll be like, well, oh, all right, yeah. It's like, he, he, I have this great idea. It's like, all right, speak it, I guess. <laughs> And so, uh, so, and just because, like, he does this, yeah. like, so much, um, so a lot of the music you hear is, like, right from, right from that noggin. Yeah, we're, we're trying to, like, write more collectively, but usually it's because we're, like, we're really scattered, and uh -huh. I tend to just make music in random spurts. Um, like, when I'm recording, I don't like to record something too long, I like to have it all be done in a session, um, and then kind of just look at it retroactively. So I tend to just like record something and I'm like, oh, well, like, that's a thing now. That's a thing that we have. Um, but we're, we're trying to like work more together um, going forward. Because Paul can play a lot of instruments better than I can. Like I can do like guitar and bass and trumpet. Paul can play piano and Paul can play drums. And so it's, you know, that's something that is great to have in the writing process. So um, do you guys have any music that's going to be coming out soon maybe? Um, we're... We're kind of piecing, we have like 20 like half written songs. Um, the thing is like with with releasing music, I've got, I think me and Paul have talked about, we kind of share it like it's, when we put out like a piece of music or like more than one song, um, like we both like having um, like almost concept albums in a sense where it's like, We'd rather put out like small albums of a couple songs that all link together like musically and thematically. Yeah, I mean even at the loosest sense, right, in yeah. which an album used to, it used to be able to trace a narrative for an album almost. And I think that's uh we kinda live in the age of the single, you know, check you know, whether you're like a mainstream artist on the radio or if you're, you know, uh, doing you know, do it yourself stuff. Uh, and you're publishing on the internet, SoundCloud, Bandcamp, it's always like singles, like check out my new single, check out this new song, and so we lose a lot of the love for a well-crafted album, you know, not to imply that uh, any of our projects are, you know, superiorly crafted. We're actually going to save music. Which... Yeah, we're, it's actually our, our, our only goal is to save music, but we, uh, not to say that it's superior to anyone else, but I definitely think that you gain a different perspective when you have a set of five or six songs that all share. You know, it's like a it's like a collection of short stories. Almost. Yeah. Um. So, do you guys see this band as like a long term thing? Um. I mean, it's not like at least for me, music is. I don't like to think of music as like a profession or like something that I'm doing more than like a hobby and kind of just like an outlet of expression. So at the very least, I think it's something that like we're gonna probably continue doing on and off for a couple of years and just like releasing. Well, and the truth, the truth of the matter is too that um, you know you have to you know if you're like under I'd say like 24, especially if you're in school yeah. and you're in a band, you kind of just have to be willing to accept the possibility that after a certain amount of years, you're just never gonna see that person again. Yeah, and so. It's like, you have to, it's an experience at the moment, you know, rather than, you know, a project that continues forevermore. Yeah, we, we don't really have this, like, some plan of, like, we're going to talk to this person, we're going to get signed here. Yeah, gonna... our five, we don't have, like, a five-year plan. We barely have a five-day plan, <laughs> you know, so it's it's kind of, although that would, that's actually a great idea. We should probably start developing some longer-term plans. I play on my grandma's bingo night. Oh, there we go. The VFW go old school with it. American Bandstand. I'm sure we can get both there. Actually, uh, support local music. Um, a lot of the shows we play, they're put on by people who, you know, are recently out of high school or are still in high school. And so a lot of the shows we have are all ages um, or they're accepting, you know, so like if that's what's keeping you from coming out, like, don't let it, you know? We advertise these pretty heavily on Facebook. Yeah. You know, tell your friends. It's, you know, and it's not an obligatory thing. You can show up, and if you hate it, just leave, you know? But I think you'd really do yourself and do your friends a service by checking out local music. Um, 
because we don't, like I said, we don't do this for a living. Not a lot of people we know do this for a living, but we do it because it's a passion project, and it's nice to, like, it's nice to have other people, if not even appreciate it, acknowledge it. You know, as long as, if you're there, and we can play passive sound into your ear holes, whether you like it or not is, be, you know, beside the point. You know, just the fact that you decided to come out actually means a lot. That's we've going had, the extra mile. That's we've supporting. we've played three or three or four. We've played like two or three crowds that were not super receptive, <laughs> um, just because like we opened and nobody like knew what yeah, was going we're on. A, we're really not a good opening. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're a little depressing, but like. But, you know, at the same time, like, it was still such an exciting feeling to, yeah. like, you know, I never, you know, because you can't be there and not, uh, you know, not give a crap about what's going on. You know, you yeah. kind of have to, you kind of have to at least care about accepting that information passively. And that means a lot, you know, even if you, like, are just at numbers to get smashed, <laughs> like a normal Sunday. Okay, well, thank you for your time. That was Alternative Girl. You'll find their music on Bandcamp. Bandcamp. SoundCloud as well? Uh, yeah, alternativegirl.bandcamp.com. Okay, well, signing off now. Down.